Shy boy always felt butterflies around her, so he does something surprising to impress her. I never had a rosy childhood. Born to middle-class parents, I always craved a rich life, one that my best friend Sophie had. On my 17th birthday, she and her boyfriend Jake, both 18, came to my party with an expensive gift. She bragged about cruising and traveling around the world with her guy, but nothing enraged me more than when she showed the expensive diamond ring he'd gifted her. I hid my hands under the gloves because I was embarrassed to show everyone my fake ring. I was jealous of Sophie and decided to find my prince charming. I dreamed of a rich man who would come to me in an expensive car and shower me with gold and diamonds. Five years passed and I was at Sophie's wedding. I looked around at the decor, beautiful flowers and wealthy guests flocking around. I looked like a housemaid in my poor ordinary dress. I thought I was the odd one out, I'd never felt so miserable all my life. If you choose money over true love, you'll be the poorest and unhappiest. After the wedding cake was cut, I stood with a guest at the entrance, waiting for Sophie to toss her bouquet. A loud wave of laughter filled the church doorway as I caught the posy of roses. I'd be the lucky next one to walk down the aisle, some cheered. But I had decided I wouldn't do it until I found my Prince Charming, a rich man with good looks and a hefty bank balance. Another five years passed and I was a secretary in a private company. I tasted success early and was still unhappy. I hadn't found my dream man yet and it easily irritated me whenever my colleagues teased me with Joe, an ordinary clerk who had harbored special feelings for me. He would leave flowers on my desk every day. I even warned him not to do it but he wouldn't stop. It irritated me. But I had more things to do than waste my time with an ordinary man and his stupid feelings for me. Joe was a good decent guy. He had looks that could kill but no money. And I was not after good looks alone. Although I could have returned his feelings for me, reality struck me hard whenever I saw him from top to toe. He's an ordinary clerk, a poor man who will not give you the life of your dreams. Don't go by the looks, Jessica, my conscience warned me. Then one day I found a way to get rid of Joe. My wealthy boss's handsome son Todd took over the company and I was his secretary. We talked beyond work and soon he fell head over heels in love with me. I couldn't deny the pleasure of being glorified by Todd's expensive gifts, weekend parties and frequent business trips around the world. Back off, you freak, I fumed at Joe and pushed him away as the lights turned on and everyone mocked him. That same evening, Todd took me to a five-star hotel and gifted me a diamond necklace. The next surprise blew me away when he got down on one knee and popped the question with an expensive diamond ring. Yes, I screamed in joy as we hugged and passionately kissed for a long time. What a beautiful diamond ring that was. I'd never seen such an expensive piece of jewelry all my life, and I couldn't wait to show it to all my friends. Thanks to social media, I quickly took beautiful photos of myself flaunting that ring and posted them on every account I had. Likes and comments flooded me, wishing me all happiness in life. Todd and I planned on getting married in three months, and as we prepared to open the most awaited chapter of our lives, I was rushed to the hospital in an ambulance one day. When I woke up, the doctors told me I needed an urgent liver transplant. My parents had died years ago and I had no siblings. I needed a donor and luckily Todd matched my blood group. While I thought he would move heaven and earth to save my life, Todd's response when I asked him if he could donate a part of his liver broke my heart. Honey, I'm ready to pay any price to save your life. I'll blindly sign the check, but please find a donor yourself. I cannot donate my liver to you because it could be risky. I'm my parents' only son and I cannot risk my life. The coldness in his words was too much for me to remain strong after hearing him out. Later, the doctors told me they found a donor matching my blood type. I was relieved and following the surgery, I fell into a coma. When I woke up a few weeks later, I wanted to thank the person who saved my life. I asked the doctor for the kind man's address and learned that the savior who restored me from the brink of death was the man I mocked and looked down upon. It was Joe and he never took a dime to save my life. Why did you do this, Joe? I hated and humiliated you. I never respected your feelings for me. I saw you as a speck of dirt and shame. Why did you do this for me? My heart hammered in my chest. As I left the hospital, Todd came running back and hugged me. Darling, I'm so glad you're back. Let's get you home, he said, leading me by my hand to his limo. I was not happy to see Todd or his expensive car. I realized that the so-called Prince Charming on a white horse appeared only in fairy tales. In reality, no prince is charming without a heart, even if it possesses all the riches and diamonds in the world. Jessica, honey, what are you doing? Todd was startled when I removed the diamond ring he gifted me and put it on the roof of his car. Todd, I thank you for the wealthy life you wanted to give me, but I've realized that money's not everything. It is nothing compared to genuine love and kindness. I'm sorry, but I want to be happy in love, not rich and ignored. Joe, I'm so sorry for hurting you. Thank you for saving my life. The doctors told me you were my donor. That day I learned what true love is. Jessica, I'll do anything for you because I love you. Even if I'm told to cut out a piece of myself to save your life, I'd happily do it. I kissed Joe again and proposed to him. We married a month later in a low-key wedding with only our nearest and dearest attending. Our wedding venue is not as grand as my best friend Sophie's. We didn't hire exquisite chefs nor throw a buffet-style wedding reception. But when I raised the toast to our new beginning, I thanked Joe for being my real Prince Charming with a true heart of gold that no amount of money could buy.
What happened to her ex-boyfriend Todd, you might wonder? Joe and I quit our jobs and started our little boutique in town, so we lost track of Todd's life after the breakup. But I learned from a close friend who still works there that he's moved on with his new secretary. I'm happy for him, and I hope he soon realizes what true love is, just like I did.